Akron and West Virginia here at WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia, getting set for the season debut. Robbie Inzmikowski is standing by with Bob Huggins. Robbie. Certainly I am, Raj, and, or uh, Rob. Bob, as you embark, get set to embark on another campaign, what is the key to your team getting off to a strong start this season? We've got to guard a lot better than we've guarded, and we've got to rebound a lot better than we've rebounded. And I think we've shown we can make shots. We just... We're not going to win big if we don't guard and we don't rebound it better. Good luck, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Robin Warren. Robbie, thank you very much. The West Virginia lineup, very tall lineup. Jermaine Haley was out against the uh, Duquesne Dukes in that exhibition matchup at 6'7. Uh, Sheepway, Matthews, and Culver, all 6'7 or taller. McCabe, of course, a six foot point guard. So it's a, a tall Mountaineers team going against Akron, led by John Gross who is in his third season at the helm of the Zips and in his career, 12 seasons, 212 and 165. The record as we take a look at Akron, a couple guys to keep in mind, Channel Banks and Cameron Reese, they were teammates at Sheridan Community College, now reunited in Akron. And Zirius Williams, they're very excited about him, a Dayton transfer who could be one of the better players in the MAC. So keep an eye on him as we get ready to go. Sheepway and Cameron Reese will tip things off. Reese, again, as we mentioned, the teammate of Channel Banks and a guy they are expecting to supply some good physical play up front for them. Well, the Mountaineers starting out in a familiar man-to-man. -man. She's now on the switch, tries to take it, but instead turns it over. Now back the other way, Williams bumps Haley, so we have our first personal foul of the game. Cheese saw what he thought was a mismatch, tried to take it to Culver. Good job collapsing defensively. Yes, it was. West Virginia did a good job, and Haley comes up the floor, had a breakaway, but there's a foul. West Virginia gets that possession. Well, Williams is not a guy that John Gross wants to see in foul trouble, so early foul. Not a concern yet, but a second would be. Culver tries to go to work on Williams right around and missed the shot. Reese the rebound. Yeah, it was a set play for Culver down the first time he had the ball inside, but it was too far out for him. Cheese corner three pointer good. Three this is a team that can Brian shoot. Cheese. Well, Cheese had 15 points in the opener against Malone, and they do like to shoot the three. Cheese banks. Lauren Christian Jackson, the point guard, and Williams, all good three point shooters, batted out of bounds as we take a look at the series history between West Virginia and the Akron Zips. And just the fifth meeting all time, the last meeting back in 2011, series tied at two apiece. West Virginia trying to get a two-man game together. Nice job, McCabe and Shibway isolated Oscar on the side. Shibway. McCabe with a nice pass inside, and Oscar Shibway finishes. Jackson forced out. Here's Cheese. Cheese will pull another three-pointer. It is good. Tyler Cheese, two three-pointers, and Akron up six to two. Okay, well now he's hit two in a row. If you're guarding Cheese, make him put it on the deck and blow by you. you get, he's feeling it too well outside right now. Cheese, a guy that feel has all-conference potential. John Gross saying that this morning. Shot by Sheboy off the mark, on the run, Cheese up ahead, Reese, ooh, missed the layup, but they are going to call a personal foul on Sheboy. Well, you can see right now, Akron wants to get out and push the basketball. One of the concerns they would have would be rebounding, but once they secure the basketball, they want to push. It came down awkwardly, so he'll go to the free throw line. First personal foul on Sheboy, Reese will shoot a pair. Had 13 points and six rebounds in the Zips opening win. They took on Malone in Division II school. Logan able to win a performance John Gross not particularly happy with as Culver out and Logan Rout has checked into the ballgame. Early substitution for Bob Huggins. Huggs may be a little upset about how long it took the bigs to get back. One of the strengths for West Virginia with Sheepway and Culver is that those big guys really run the floor well. Contact inside and Logan Rout using that 
big physical frame and draws a personal foul on Reese. As we take a look at Bakes taking your keys to the game here, Warren. Good transition defense by West Virginia. They like to shoot the threes. Continuity on offense, especially with substitution on the boards. For Akron, premium effort. John Gross did not like that. They must box out. If they don't box out against West Virginia, they won't have a chance, and they must hit the threes, which they've started doing. Thought he saw good things against a team in a couple of scrimmages against Robert Morris and Xavier. Those are close scrimmages. They don't talk about the results of those games, but thought his team played pretty well, better than they did, he thought, in the matchup against Malone, as we see Matthews hit the three-pointer. And we talked about Matthews on the onset. He does really need to work on that shot. I'll tell you, the way he attacks the rim, he gets that package down, it'll be really tough on people. Williams will step back. Route does a nice job to recover. Rebound to Sheepway on the air ball. There's Matthews. Oh, beautiful feet. She though has it knocked away by Cheese. Quick hands by Cheese. Here's Williams. He'll try the three-pointer. That's off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Bang Ria. Now Banks will try for three, and he will hit Channel Banks. They fired up 34 threes against Malone, so certainly that's a big part of their offense. And they were a really strong defensive team, one of the better defensive teams in the country a year ago. Now feel like they have the depth to be able to push the ball more. That's something they want to do. They've been successful early on. Shibuya off the mark. Jackson the rebound. And now we have a personal foul call. And it's going to stay on this end as Route draws another foul call. Bob Huggins not happy at all with Shibuya's shot decision. Uh, shot another one from the free throw. Did not make the first. Did not make the second. Now he's going to have to sit down and uh, think about it for a sec. The react was called with a personal foul so a couple of fouls to the bigs Ooh, a nice block by react yeah yeah react the best defensive player that's 16 body up there and got a piece of that shot there's williams he'll try from three his shot is well off the mark the rebound to haley now he shot an almost 40 percent from three-point range for dayton a couple years ago did not have a good shooting night against malone no he was 211 uh, two for 11 against malone and they're struggling here early on. Boy, she like some contact there. No foul called. Culver misses the jam. And be a, another foul. This is Logan Rout has come into this game and drawn three Everybody personal fouls as they'll home. get Reese now for the charge. Yeah, that doesn't show up in, in the box score at the end, but those are huge plays. Good job by Rout getting there, holding his position, and absorbing the contact. Well, that'll get you playing time because that will be appreciated. John Gross maybe didn't appreciate it, but Logan Rout has come in and made his presence felt in that regard and has done a nice job defensively on Williams as well. You know, Akron's starting in their man-to-man, -man, and they've been very physical with the Mountaineers to begin this ball game. And now down low, we're going to get another personal foul. This one on the freshman, Ali Ali. He picks up his first personal foul. The zips out to a hot shooting start. Lead the Mountaineers 11 to 5. So one of the things we talked about, them hitting three-pointers, Akron, and that's a big part of their game. In order for them, I think, to have a good chance of winning this game, they have hitting West Virginia is going to have to do a better uh, job of guarding the perimeter. They're getting too many good looks early on here in the ball game and knocking them down. They're three for five from three-point range. Two hit by Tyler Cheese, one by Channel Banks. We've seen Zerius Williams take a couple three-ball attempts. Lauren Christian Jackson, the point guard, is another guy who can shoot it, so they will. And again, that was one of your keys, but they will look to extend this West Virginia defense and see if they can get some three-pointers over the top of them. Yeah, and Zarius Williams is 0 for 2 from 3 right now, and he was 2 for 11 last ball game. Just because he's off to that cold shooting, don't forget about him. Here's a guy that can get hot in a hurry. You mentioned almost 40% at Dayton. They really could shoot it. Did not have a good shooting night against Malone in the opener. Really they did, uh, it frequently just takes one, right? Yes. I'm really impressed with the aggressiveness that Akron is playing with right now with the Mountaineers. They are really bumping the Mountaineers, sort of pushing them around a little bit. Here's Haley. Oh, what a beautiful move. And they're going to get the block call on Channel Banks. What a scoop. Oh, you talk about body control. Channel Banks. 
his first. Yep, Banks not six. quite set up square Heavy to draw that charge. Uh, Haley, did, Haley didn't play in the scrimmage, had a slight back issue, but I talked to him today and he said he felt great. Well, this is a long Mountaineer team. I mean, McCabe is six feet tall, and then, you know, Haley is backcourt, made it 6'7. Matthews is 6'7. Sheebway 6'9. Culver 6'10. That's your starting lineup. It's got to be one of the taller starting lineups in Division I basketball. So, three point play. And now, West Virginia is going to set up their pressure for the first time as we get a look at the freshman, Miles McBride. They really like what he can bring defensively. And a quick turnover forced. Well, West Virginia had numbers, but they could have realized that early on there. But they had the ball back and setting up the half court. A strong screen, and now Matthews open for three, and he hits it. Well, you see Matthews in the gym a lot late in the evening, early in the day, really working on that perimeter game. West all Virginia, time at 11. Yeah, West Virginia in a 2-2-1. Two, two, Press, not a lot of pressure on it. Now drop back half court man to man. Cheese, difficult shot. Matthews the rebound. Good job by Actor in getting back, regrouping defensively. 11 11 game. Just about 14 and a half minutes still remaining here in the first half. Matthews will try it again. Deep three to hit. Boy, and is he feeling it now? And John Gross has seen enough. Would somebody please guard number 11 for West Virginia? Wow. Emmett Matthews talked about his 11 points against Duquesne. Really finished the season strong a year ago for the Mountaineers. 28 points and eight rebounds against Texas Tech in the Big 12 turning, starting the season strong here as well. Yeah, well, and I think about it again. If you go out now, what you're going to have to do with the way he's shooting the basketball, he has that quick first step, can blow by you, and then he may dunk on someone. That's what he thinks every time he drives to the basket. Well, we talked too about how tall the team is, but Jermaine Haley was a guy who playing in junior college played the point at six foot seven so they have a lot of guys that can move the ball around well as well Derek Culver we saw last year can be a good passer out of the pivot so it's a team that can be unselfish and find open teammates as well and that's one thing Bob Huggins harped on after the two games scrimmage. he wasn't real happy with the way they shared the basketball but early on right now West Virginia finding the open man there's Bob Huggins he Akron Hall of Famer. And West Virginia stand with that 2-2-1. Two, two, Not a lot of pressure. Triple takes you to the basket. Ooh, that is rejected by Culver. Battle for it. Williams gets it back. Williams has it batted away. And here comes Haley for the Mountaineers. Down to Culver. Ooh, swatted Boy, from behind. What's fair at one end is fair at the other. That was... Cameron Reese with a rejection. Reese, oh, wow. Reese. difficult shot yeah, from down from by his hip. Yeah, Reese. from his hip. That's exactly right. This is going to get interesting inside because these guys are battling. Well, this is the tenacity John Gross said was lacking exactly. in their first game and had been present prior to that. Well, I think John Gross totally is bulked up. If you don't come out and play with the type of intensity, it won't be an easy evening for you. Boy, that is a tough shot by Taz Sherman. Sherman brings a lot of shooting ability to the Mountaineers last year in McKinney, Texas at Colon College, one of the top Juco scorers in the nation. Number four, by the way, here's Zerius Williams. He hits a three. And again, you can't forget about him. He will light it up. He's off to a rough start, but here's a guy that can get him in bunches. 16 apiece. West Virginia, after a cold start, is at four of its last five from the floor. Haley, the nice reverse. Jermaine Haley. You, you commented about the size. There's going to always be someone a little smaller on Haley with that big lineup in. And he's going to take advantage of that. 
Jackson dribbling off his foot. Third turnover as we take a look at Haley driving baseline. Under control. That's the thing you really like about him. Even when he made the, the three-point play there, he certainly was under control, knows exactly what he wants to do. First look at Chase Harler from Moundsville, West Virginia, checking into the game. West Virginia ran into trouble last game against Duquesne with continuity off the bench, keeping that offense flowing. Let's see how it works out this evening. They tried to pull up. The freshman can't get it to go. Here's Cheese back the other way. As Williams is a trailer. And picked off by McBride. And she played a long oh, finish. He just kind of stretched and laid that in. That was a very difficult shot because Sheepway wasn't as wide as you would like to have your player in a situation like that when he's coming down the break. And he caught that ball and was still able to stay under control and make the shot. That's tight quarters to try to catch a pass. I wonder if he was a little further out than maybe he realized when yeah. he took off with that scoop move, but got it to go now a chance for a three-point play, and he is able to convert. Now you're staying with this 2-2-1-1. Two, two, one, one. Yeah. Really not trapped. I think that really got the Mountaineers going when Bob Huggins switched to that defense. Cheese kicks quarter back to Banks to Jackson. The extra pass and the three is good. Nice three point perimeter shot. work by the Zips. Yeah. Hitting the extra open man. And the drive oh. takes it all the way. Where they really like Miles Deuce McBride, the freshman. They very high on him offensively and defensively. Yeah, West Virginia just not letting Akron come down and set up whatever they want, making them labor to get the ball up the floor a little bit. Jackson hesitation move, kicks to the corner. Ali with a three pointer. It is short. And the rebound to Sherman. Ooh, Matthews has it stolen. Nice job by Banks, and Banks loses it out of bounds. It'll be West Virginia basketball on the turnover. The, well, the Mountaineers up by the score of 23 to 19. As McBride takes it right at you and in for the score. 10.54 remaining first half. Well, one thing that you really like about Emmett Matthews I'll tell you what, the young man has been working on his perimeter game, and the thing I like about him, he's ready to shoot the ball. They call it catch and shoot. Yeah, he knows that ball might come back him. He catches it, and in all one motion, he goes right into his shot. That is really, really difficult to defend because that's, he's ready to shoot it. If you rush out too hard, then he's going to blow by you and make you pay when he drives. He's three for three, all three of those conversions from three-point range, so he has nine points to lead the Mountaineers. Mountaineers outscoring Akron in the point in the uh, paint 10 to 2. So when you do that and then have somebody like Matthews, you can stretch the D. That that's, Boy, it makes it very difficult to defend. tough. With the guys like Sheboy, you know, eventually teams are going to start doubling down on he and Culver, which will really open it up outside. Chase Harler, nice looking out of bounds play as they go into Haley. He kicks back to Harler. And Chase Harler hits a three-pointer. It is a seven-point Mountaineers lead. I was giving Chase Harler a hard time before the ball game. He said, you missed a lot of open threes from the corner the other day. He says, I'm not going to miss him tonight. Well, so far, he, he's living up to what he said. Mountaineers are four for four from three-point range. Oh, the pressure defense beginning to rattle Akron a little bit, at least on this possession. This is exactly where Harlow was shooting earlier today, uh, doing shoot around and before the game. He said, I got to find my little spot out there and get my, get my rhythm down. You know, I like about that too, we talked about Haley being a point guard. He just hit him. He didn't have to reach one way or the other, and he just hit it right where he could catch That's it and shoot. immediately shoot it. Exactly. There's Banks, tough step back three pointer, rebound to McBride. 
Deuce McBride will pull up and he will hit from the free throw line. Well, and McBride was quiet the other night in the Duquesne scrimmage, but you know, West Virginia has so many different weapons that they can throw at you. Extra pass, Sirius Williams, and he hits the three-pointer. Yep. That's three two in a row for him from the perimeter now after having a rough start. You can't forget about scores and shooters. They figure out a way to get those points. Snaps a 7-0 run and cuts the lead down to six. Shibwe just backing in, however, missed the short shot, and now personal foul. Looks like it's going to go against. It's going to go against West Virginia, yeah, I believe. May have, may have been on Shibwe. Just West didn't get the ball up high ball enough on the glass. Shibwe, his second. Team foul number two. Derek Cole. Well, McBride looks so confident, doesn't he? Confident and comfortable. Yes. You don't win as many games in high school as you did in, in basketball and football, and not have that type of confidence. Here's Banks gets a nice screen from Reak and is able to take it in. So after a 7-0 run, Akron has scored the last five to cut the lead to four. Yeah, Reak did a nice job of screening that backside. And we're going to call Sherman for the travel, his second turnover. Evan Matthews. Yeah, clear out. On that left side, and the Riyadh just backs up and leaves a clear lane to the basket. West Virginia has got to be able to shift over quicker and get a man out there to at least contest that shot. And Riyadh doing a nice job there too, sort of selling the, uh, you know, moving into position for a potential rebound. Nice kick out to Cheese. And this shot off the mark, rebound to Culver. Nice move yeah. again, Deuce McBride. An impressive beginning to the career of Deuce McBride. She's going to work on Sherman. Kicks it out. This is Tribble. Got to leave it down, but the feet of Reese. Now Reese going hard and off the mark. Oh, a nice rebound by Cheese. Oh, boy. Leaves it for Reese, blocked from behind by Matthews. Matthews with a good recovery. There was a defensive mix-up. Cheese had a layup and tried to get inside, but nice recovery by Matthews. Hey, Reese, a block as uh, he does a nice job on Sherman. Cheese back the other way as we're getting a little bit of a pell-mell pace here. That knocked away from behind, personal foul called. And the Mountaineers, as we head to a break, up 30 to 24, 7.56 remaining. And how about the impressive play of Miles McBride? The freshman drives to the hole with the finish. Mountaineers off to a fast start offensively. 30 points in the first 12 minutes here of the first half. I'm Robbie and Smikowski. We talk about the Mountaineers and their shooting. 57% so far. And I asked assistant coach Larry Harrison, who handles a majority of the shooting with the guards, I asked, how good is your team this year from the floor? He said, and I quote, this is the best shooting team I've had since the Final Four team. Back in 2010, he said, we have a number of guys that shoot the ball well. Chase Harler, Emmett Matthews. And then you bring in a couple other guys like Taz Sherman and Sean McNeil. The key is seeing the results during the season and that's going to result in the hard work and practice they put in and also the spacing on the floor. Now Robin Warren, these guys are all going to play. It's just a matter of what matchups they happen to play at certain times. He says now, Larry that is, he's just glad they're playing against a team that's competitive against us in practice. We don't know if we're seeing good shooting or bad defense. He's willing to see what he has on his hands tonight in terms of what he sees from the floor. And thus far, as they get a, a good looking out of bounds play, Banks misses. Uh, the shooting has been excellent. Four for four from three point range. To the Mountaineers converting on that end. And again, the bench 11 and Akron's bench zero as McNeil misses that shot. So again, you know, it's one thing to play players, but they've got to be productive when they get those minutes as well. Sure. And thus far, it's been an edge for the Mountaineers, up six with under seven and a half remaining in the first half. Oh, and Ali Ali's going to be called for the travel. Fifth turnover by the Zips. 
And John Gross, head coach at Illinois, prior to that had been at Ohio, and now back at the MAC, and he said the MAC is a much better league, top to bottom, a much more difficult league than the one in which he coached it when he coached at Ohio. He said the, the league was uh, not as tough then. They're picked to finish fifth, and I think that they believe fifth in the East, and I think they believe they will be better than that. And Matthew Street just off the mark. Harlow the rebound. Jackson ties him up. Jump ball. Possession arrow to the Mountaineer. And here is that Mac conference preseason poll. This again in the Blue East. So Bowling Green, the obvious pick, then Buffalo. Then some group, uh, teams grouped together there. Kent State, Miami, and Akron. And Akron really believes that they've John Gross believes he's got his team heading in the right direction. They've got a couple of really good transfers. Daly and Trimble Daly from Iowa. Trimble from St. John's who will join the team next year. With some experienced players back. So I believe they have Akron pointing in the right direction. But great job by Keith Dambrock. A decade of great success. For Dambrock is now the Duquesne coach. The ball out of bounds will remain. West Virginia basketball. That ball went off of Jackson. Good recognition by Sean McNeil not to touch that basketball. He saw that he hit the Akron player and did not go after it. Here's Napper. Had to. Yes. And off the mark. Brandon Napper's checked in for McCabe at the point guard position. There's Williams trying to go to work now and he is fouled by Napper on the switch, so yes. good job by Williams understanding that he had a small uh, player trying to back him in and get a shot. Yeah, Williams at 6'9", and you got Napper out there at 6 foot, so they did recognize that. And Napper did about the only thing he could do, and that was fouling just now. Williams had backed him down in the lane. So Williams' best season at Dayton a couple of years ago when he averaged 8 points and 5 rebounds a game. That came as a sophomore, and then Last year as a junior, Anthony Grant came in to coach the team, and he saw his playing time diminish, so he opted to transfer, and, and they think he's going to be one of the better players in the Mac because he hits both free throws and cuts the lead to four. Now, West Virginia's had a few bad possessions the last couple of times down the court, and they've got some substitutions in, so let's see whether or not they can get back on track. Napper will pull up, and Napper's Brandon. shot goes down. Napper under control, hit that 15-footer. Good elevation on the jump. Hughes lost his balance, was able to regain. Here's Riyad, kicks in the corner. Hughes thought about it, moves in closer, shot off the mark. Farther on the deck. Gets it up to Napper. Oh, my God. Oh. Napper. Jeez. Put a little chalk on the pool cue to get that one to go down. Extra pass after Cheese. Three-pointer. It is short. Rebound to Culver. Yeah, Cheese has cooled off after having a hot start. West Virginia's lead at eight. Over, low block, and the lefty gets it to go, and a chance for a three-point play, and a foul call on Dang Riyad. The foul number ten. Boys, look at the hustle by Chase Harlan. Getting that ball, and Brandon Napper says, "I will finish it." Yes, Sean uh, Neal in the corner, open, but he says, "I'll take it." And then the jump hook. Soft by Culver, able to get the roll. A 6-0 run over the last minute and one second. Culver did just enough to come to the middle to get a decent angle to shoot that little jump hook. Run now at seven, and the lead for the Mountaineers in double figures. Jeez, hearing, hearing it from the... West Virginia fans as Channel Banks drives and he'll draw the foul. West Virginia double teamed out near the top of the key as they did the other night against Duquesne and had some trouble. That time rotation was much better. Banks still able to make an athletic move driving home and get fouled, but the rotation for West Virginia 
after the double team and the ball out was much better. Banks was just a 59% free throw shooter a year ago. And he misses the first. It's always surprising when you see a guy who can shoot well from three point range not be a top notch free throw shooter. Yeah. Back up. <laughs> go ahead and shoot him. Go ahead and shoot him from the top. It don't only give you one point, but if you feel more comfortable. He missed him both. Well, West Virginia, fortunately, not a very good box out inside. The Mountaineers. Running with several different combinations as Channel Banks is charging a foul. That's a second on him. Ninth team foul to be a one and one. Ali Ali checks back in for Anthony. Banks will go out. Ali will check back in yeah, for him. Banks trying to stop Haley from being able to cut the baseline. He's got a little bit too much body. One and no one and one for. Haley, and he'll get the second. We wondered about the rotation for the Mountaineers, how the different configurations were going to work out. So far, Bob Huggins has put the right players out there, and they've been able to execute as Haley now with the air ball. They're going to let play continue. No, now they finally say, okay, it's a violation. <laughs> and it will be after bottom. The only problem with this is it allows West Virginia a chance to set up their press, press but, right. but it is the right call. The players knew it. The officials just took a moment to figure it out. Haley will hear about that air ball tomorrow in practice. <laughs> so it may be that after the game, providing things go well for the Mountaineers. Jackson, oh. will we get it back? Right. Set up, three pointer, no good. And the rebound will go out of bounds off West Virginia to remain after basketball. The Mountaineers really not putting a body on a body inside. You know, when a ball comes off like that, you don't want it to be a 50-50 ball. You want to box out and get the rebound. It seems like a, an important stretch for Akron. They've hung in there for most of the half, and now we have a whistle. Let's see what the call is. Shot clock not move. Is that what happened? Yeah, it's, it says 30. And Matthews will check in for Sean McNeil. Reset or have the uh, shot clock at 16 seconds. Cheese kicks corner. Jackson steps to his right three pointer on the way in and out. And tracked back down by Cheese. And now the turnover. Matthews back the other way for West Virginia. Misses the layup. Blocked away by Reese on the Culver attempt. And it will be West Virginia basketball. Reese with a couple of blocks here. Today. Yes, good hustle by Ackman to get back to distract Matthews on the shot and then reject Culver. Thus far, there's been no intimidation with the Akron players also inside. Jackie They've gone at the Mountaineers and blocked a number of shots, contested a number of shots. And physical play, which sometimes makes some teams a little timid, does not seem to bother the Akron Zips either. And McCabe. And I'll leave the rebound. Jackson inside and sails. Thought he was fouled. No call. Oh, got a piece of ball. For the first time. Matthews, three pointer on the way. Too strong, right on target, but a little too strong. The rebound to Tribble. Matthews thought it was going in. He did not follow his shot. And Tribble zings one through the hands of Ali and out into the stands. There's and it'll be Washington in basketball. When do we resume? The Mountaineers have stretched the lead to 12. Up 38 to 26. Mountaineers lead by a dozen, three and a half remaining in half number one. And if you're watching West Virginia basketball for the first time this year, you might notice the court looks a little bit different. 
That is because the court is quite different. It was redesigned by two ladies in the athletic department, Kristen Coldsnow and April Messerly. And the primary thing they wanted to do was get away from the all gold. It popped a bit much. They wanted to add the state outline. As you see that right there, that looks fantastic. Now, the Mountaineers, West Virginia and Mountaineers, extends to each end of the baseline. They figured it was a good time to do it, Robin Warren, because the three-point lines have been extended, so you get the words running along the side of the court, almost the length of the three-point lines. And the practice facility, by the way, has the same exact design. So it's a pretty cool thing that they did here at the Coliseum. You get a look at the Mountaineers, West Virginia Mountaineers, under the basket. Really, really cool stuff and a great design. And by the way, at halftime, we'll talk a little bit more about it with Athletic Director Shane Lyons during our halftime report here on AT&T Sportsnet. Rob? Looking forward to that. Do you wonder what he's thinking about today? Of course, the Athletic Director here, his son, is the long snapper for the Akron basketball team. So, <laughs> sure that'll come up with uh, Robbie's interview with Shane Lyons at halftime. Empty possession for the Mountaineers. A long drought for Akron. Three minutes old for their last nine from the floor. Fans getting cheese, a little, yep. uh, little music with his name. For the Mountaineer oh, Reeves section, he's finding one player oh, yeah. to pick on, and Tyler Cheese is that guy. So every time he touches it, you hear these cheese chants that you probably hear him behind us. There is the foul call. And then Cheese, mm -hmm. high off the glass, doesn't oh, get the call. Almost a drop. Or doesn't get the fall, I should say. Doesn't get the call, but not the fall. Cheese has been very, very active in the first half. Shot the, started out shooting the ball really well. Has cooled off since, but is still very, very active. And his five rebounds, just an athletic player. I mean, you know, he's 6'5", so it's not like he's a huge body guy, but you can see the athleticism. See why they think he has the potential to be an all-conference guy, but misses the free throw here. 69% free throw shooter a year ago. Culver in for Shibwe for the Mountaineers. There it is. I don't know. Can you hear the chance? Yeah. You, you know, know what? At home can I, hear. I'm sure he's used to that. That's probably happened on a number of occasions. Average 11 points a game last year. Almost five rebounds a game. So he's already hit his average in the first half. Oh boy, that's easy for Jermaine Hill. Easy pickings on the nice field from Culver off the double team. Culver, exactly. Culver recognized the double team and gave a nice pass inside the Haley. She shot off the mark. And now Trivel's going to be called for the foul, holding on to McCabe. I mentioned this before the break. Down 13 for Akron. They played a pretty good half as we take a look at the nice Akron move here by Haley. Fly. And well, you'd, you'd have to think that John Gross wants his team to at least stay in touch with the Mountaineers. Right. Don't want to go down 15, 17 points. Yeah, you're right. You're exactly right, Rob. This last 223 of the half will be very, very important for Akron. McCabe hits the first. By the same token, Bob Huggins is not going to be a happy camper if he sees this lead disintegrate, especially if it's a, a sloppy play. So, I think that's quite accurate. And McCabe shot 74% from the line a year ago. Correction: the last person sophomore in the former Mr. Wisconsin basketball. He's another guy in eight of his last ten games. He misses the second free throw in double figures last year. So a lot of these young guys really in a kind of a disappointing season for the Mountaineers really came on strong towards the end of the year. Yeah, well, it started with the Big 12 tournament. They're playing well there, actually you know, beating Texas Tech. Right. And then uh, and then carried it over in the CBI. So. Yep, and there's the guy. Uh, Second time Jackson's lost the handle and. Jackson and Matthews fighting for it, but you know, we talked about Matthews having 28 points in that win over Texas Tech, what McCabe did down the stretch, Jermaine Haley, nine of his last 10 games are in double figures, so a lot of arrows pointing upward, and Derek Culver, of course, just got better and better as the season wore on. Well, I, I think that a lot of it had to do with not as many guys playing as they had been at the beginning of the year, so. And players weeded out toward yes. the end of the year. What a nice move by Jackson. Then. It sure was, breaking a long drought from the floor for Akron. Oh, 
Both guys are in by call. This had a pretty delivery. Shades of a young Warren Baker yeah, left handed left -handed, in there. Like yeah, that. mine just didn't go in. <laughs> but uh, Colford does a nice job of recognizing whether or not a double team's going to come. But she's passed up the open three. Oh, yeah. The Cheese will take it in again and won't get the ball again. So Cheese has really cooled off. Hit those two early threes. Oh, and now just two great from the floor as Culver facing up here. You know, watch, yeah, but he's recognized. He's looking around, and there's no double team coming in. He says, that's me. I can go. Had a double team come to Culver, he'd have been able to kick that ball out. That's good recognition, something that he didn't do real well last year. Cheese hits the first free throw. That's a lead back to 13. <laughs> There's the cheese chance. <laughs> and the lead down to 12 now. He probably goes to bed at night and hears that ringing in his ears. <laughs> Sherman being guarded by Triple into Culver. Culver again looking around. And this time the reverse, he's going to be fouled by Jaden Sales, and Culver will go to the free throw line. I was just watching he and Sales inside, and they were really banging each other. West Virginia, though, making a concerted effort to go inside right now. Culver shot 59% from the free throw line a season ago. And hits the first. And that's something that he really is going to work on because he's going to be sent to the line a lot. Where he goes down inside and with the power moves that he had, he's going to be getting to the foul line. It's in both. Williams checks back in. A little bit of offensive defensive substitutions here for John Gross, maybe keeping an eye on the foul trouble for his team. We only got nine players that we expect to see tonight. Exactly. One of the players in his rotation not here on the trip, so down to nine. Good double team by West Virginia. Jackson tied up by Here's Deuce ball. McBride and the three West Virginia the basketball here. on the eighth turnover the first half for the Zips. Boy, Jackson was in no man's land. He's the smallest man on the court. Culver was double teaming. That was Triple. just a, he could not Triple. see anything. I thought he might try to call a quick timeout, mm -hmm. but. Jump ball, West Virginia's possession. The turnovers eight to two. West Virginia doing a really good job of taking care of the ball. Sherman pulls up. Taz Sherman knocks it down. Wow. Yeah, that's a guy that could create his own. He had that side cleared out, went down, and just created his own shot. And a slow pass. Ninth turnover. Sherman comes up with it, finds Culver, but a charge first as Cheese stepped in to draw the contact. Good play by Cheese. Bob Huggins looking up to see the scoreboard to see whether or not it was outside the arc or not on the charge. Yeah. Yep, that was a pretty good call. Yep, I thought it was a pretty good call. The Akron is one of their last 12 from the floor. He was the hold to the final shot here. Trailing by 16. Cheese going to work. And Cheese is able to get it go. To go, and that will be the final score of the first half. A good first half for the Mountaineers against an Acker team that got off to a good start, but West Virginia is slowly able to pull away, and they're enjoying a 14-point lead now of 47 to 33 as we will head to halftime. Bob Huggins, Mountaineers, up 47 to 33. One of St. Nick's helpers. 
here at the WVU Coliseum, ready to distribute a little early Christmas cheer, get a little rhythm going. She was dancing when the band was out here, having a lot of fun. The Mountaineers up 14 in this game. You know, Warren, a really good start for John Gross's Akron Zips team as they were able to get some three-pointers early on, three for five from three-point range. That really kept things, kept them in the game here and kept things close early on. Well, they came out fresh and really hit those threes. West Virginia finally extended the defense and cooled them off a little bit, but I know John Gross was happy to play his ball club started. Meanwhile, different Mountaineers stepped up at different times. Deuce McBride had a nice first half with six points. Coming off the bench, brought a lot of energy into the ball game. Hit a couple of little jump shots and you know, drove to the basket. Really got the team going in the right direction when he came in. And then eight for Jermaine Haley. So the freshman with six and Haley the senior with eight points. He looked like a seasoned veteran the way he was handling himself on the court. They're yeah, using a good body control, knowing when to take it and when to pass it. The Akron Chips, after a hot start, really went cold from the floor as that second half progressed, and the Mountaineers able to extend the lead to 47 to 33. Well, yeah, with the one stat that does kind of stand out, they are out rebounding the Mountaineers by one here at halftime, which is not going to make Hugs happy. But the Mountaineers have forced those nine turnovers, a lot of them coming late in the first half. As we get ready for the second half, wanted to send our best wishes out to Matt Williams, our extremely talented director, uh, one of the great guys in the business, not only talent-wise, but just personality-wise. Uh, dealing with a bit of a health issue, uh, we're all thinking about you, Matty, who would normally be down here directing the game. Our thanks to Pete Toma for stepping in and directing uh, Matt Williams. We love you, brother, and uh, we're all for you. Yeah, Matty, get well soon, buddy. Hang in there. So, uh, wow. Getting ready for the second half now of action as the Mountaineers find themselves up 14 and it will be the Akron Zips to the ball first. Important for them to establish something here early in the second half. For Akron, yes. I think the first you know, four, four minutes of this half will be very important. Can they cut back into that Mountaineer lead or will West Virginia be able to extend it? Cheese being guarded by Haley. Man-to-man -man defense for the Mountaineers. Cheese takes it all the way to the basket. Oh, and boy, missed the layup, was fouled. That would have been a nice opportunity for a three-point play for West Virginia. Virginia. Uh, Haley is charged with a foul for the Mountaineers for Akron. I should say that would have been a nice start. Well, at some point in time, Cheese would have to prove to me that he can go right. He's left-handed in everything that you've been seeing. He's been going down the left side. Now, he may have a quick crossover that gets him that step. But, you know, maybe force this young man to go right and just see what he can do. Because he's shown you what he can do when he goes left. There's Jermaine Haley, tasked with guarding Cheese. And you mentioned Cheese, a really athletic player who can stroke the three. And he gets both free throws to cut the lead early to 12. Well, and when you, you know, when you play a team that shoots the threes, expect them to be fresh coming out. So West Virginia has to amp up that defensive pressure and not give them as many open threes as they did early on. Well, Haley, pretty spin. Well, everything but the finish. Mm. Reese the rebound. It was Taz Sherman starting the second half and not Oscar Sheba. Interesting. Jackson the crossover. And the finish and a chance for a three-point play for Channel Banks. Not a real good foul by Derek Culver. Well, if you're gonna foul the guy right there, don't let him get the shot off. That was just kind of a touch foul uh, when he drove baseline. Really not a lot of contact, you know, Ben. Really, really make that man, young man earn those shots. And he gets the three-point play, so a quick 5-0 run for Akron to start the second half. They've got things back to single digits, 47-38. Yeah, West Virginia doing a good job running the offense. Ooh. And McCabe and Jackson get tangled up, and... I don't know if this was a two or a three. Uh, yeah, it's a two. Shot. Yep, I, I was looking at the same thing. Didn't think that he was quite far enough out. Actually, that wouldn't have been a three on the old line either, so. Well, that's, you can see where Jackson would complain because McCabe kicked his kicked foot the, out yep. to draw the contact. the contact. And that's supposed to be a no-no this year. I talked to the officiating crew before, and they said they, you know, Early on dealing with exhibitions, they've been working on the new rules, and they've called that a couple times. You know, the head bob and the, the diving rule that they want to get rid of in basketball, which, frankly, I'm all for. 
like kind of that. So what we just saw there. Now, it'll be interesting to see if there was enough contact. But, you know, you used to see guys driving down the lane constantly bobbing their head and, and trying to draw to the, uh, you know, trying to draw a foul call. So here's the look. And they got him maybe a little bit on the, a little bit of a swipe. Yeah. But, you know, that, right, if there's no contact there, that move that we've seen for years in college basketball will not be called. And, in fact, will be an infraction on the offensive player. Williams, tough right. fadeaway. Williams, Williams. Williams, that was a tough shot. Now, you, you mentioned that Sheepway not starting. I think it was a matchup problem on the defensive end. You know, they really only have a true, one true center, and I think it would be a difficult matchup for West Virginia with two bigs on the floor trying to guard the men, especially on the perimeter. Sherman dumps down to Haley. Haley. Jermaine a contact, Haley. able to create some room and convert, lead back up to 10. Yeah, John Gross kind of threw his hands out to the side saying, what do we have to do to get a charge here? Jackson tries to turn the corner. He sort of swallowed up inside. Yeah, that was not a smart move by Jackson to dribble down in that traffic. Tenth turnover. McBride pulls up. Short. Rebound to Culver. Put back too strong. Matthews battling. Gets it back. And Matthews, the pump fake at the finish. Well, good work on the offensive boards by the Mountaineers. So Derek Culver's got to relax and just lay that ball up softly in a point blank shot and couldn't get it to drop. Once again, the double team out to Jackson is able to split it this time. Banks three pointer wide open converts. Well, it's how West Virginia have trouble with that very same thing against Duquesne. Once that double team has the rest of the guys have to move up and be ready to close out on shooters. Well, they're trying to go to work and they're going to call the push on Cameron Reese. Banks and settle down. We don't want to get a technical. Cameron Reese is second. He's ball number two. Second foul on Reese, second team foul, and we see substitutions for the Akron Zips. Inside Haley, boy, Jermaine Haley. Jermaine Haley. He looks just so comfortable on the floor. You know, the, everything he's doing is just easily done. Takes his time, knows what he wants to do, and then executes. Here's Ali, finds himself in trouble. As Banks, Banks threw a little bit of contact. Yes, it was. Lead back down to nine again. Well, I'm sure John Gross at halftime said to his ball club, listen, I'll, we'll find out a little bit about you guys when you come out here now. Oh, yes. Wow. We talk about making a lefty go to his right, right and Culver was able to go to his yeah, right Exactly. Finish. Jackson, long three-pointer. Wow! Three -pointer. Right, Haley right in his face, and he's still able to knock it down. Lauren Christian Jackson cuts it to an eight-point lead now. Five foot eight, shooting over a six-seven. And Culver, Matthew tries to get the entry pass to him. That's why they always like that, that good angle, right? right? To get over to the wing before they get it in there. Deep. Yeah, got a partial screen from Diab, just enough to spring him. Also checking in for West Virginia, Logan Ross. Akron, a chance to cut into this lead further. Hanging around and doing just what they want to. Akron, John Gross has to be happy with the way his team has come out after the half. And Logan Rout in not cheap way right now, so Logan Rout getting an opportunity here as Culver takes a rest on the, on the bench. Ali looking for some help, it would seem, handling the ball. Finds Tribble, and Tribble can't finish. Oh, the putback attempt, no good. And then Williams. It looks like there's going to be a foul call on Logan Rout. So after has come out, and they've cut into this first half deficit. It was 14. It's now down to eight. down three to nothing to the top defensive team in the NHL. The Islanders, they roared back with three in the third to tie it and then won it in the Brian Rust overtime goal. And returning home after a 
brief two-game road trip to Boston and New York. Brooklyn. Well, it's been a solid five for Akron. Five starters have scored no bench points at all Zip. for Akron at this point. 17 nothing is the deficit there. You, you want some type of production off your now. You know, defensively you don't play hard, but you have to have some type of production. Here's Ali. And Ali will go to the free throw line with a chance to come up with the first bench points here for Akron. Ball is whistled on Terry Sherman, the second. Team foul number five. At the line for Akron. Ali is a young kid. Ali, Ali. He Two looks shots. like sometimes he's not exactly sure what he wants to do, but he's getting in there, mixing it up with Mountaineers. So the bench is on the board for John Gross's Akron Zips, and they've got a pair. And the lead is down to six. six. From 14 to six in under five minutes. Another turnover. Wow. Just sloppy passes. Fifth turnover. Here's Williams on the trail. Three-pointer too strong. Triple the rebound, but underneath the basket. Dang Riak is going to be called for the personal foul on Emmett Matthews. But right now, yeah, Akron really going to the boards much stronger and harder than the Mountaineers are. Yeah, they're going to, they're going to get a few fouls, but I'm telling you what, the aggressiveness that they have going to the board. Now it looks like the officials might be walking over to take a look to see if they thought anything was. And it was an Ali, not Riak, so my apologies. There's Tony Caridi and Jay Jacobs, radio crew for long-standing radio crew for the Mountaineers. Well, him and Matthews hit the floor pretty hard. Uh, they don't, really couldn't see what kind of contact it was. But they're going to take a look at it here. Oh, boy, he was just shoved out of bounds. Ali Ali gets him on a shove. Just on the surface, it looked... A little intentional now. Whether it was just a good hard basketball player, that'll be in the interpretation of the officials. I, I saw a good hard basketball play, but you know, freshman trying to come down and make something happen. Yeah. Take a look at it here and see it. Uh, Bottom of your screen. <laughs> oh, maybe a little acting there, but but uh, he Ali Ali fully intended to make some good hard contact. Tom Eads explaining to John Gross to call. I think it's probably going to go against. And I don't think John Gross is liking the explanation. So it's going to be a flagrant one, and Matthews will shoot a couple of free throws. So that deemed excessive and unnecessary. And Matthews hits the first. Yeah, no. I don't know. It, was, it might have been a little excessive. Yes, perhaps. it was. Yep. I like that wider angle we saw there. Matthews hits them both. So they said excessive. Yep, uh, F1 foul, excessive. Boy, you wonder whether or not this will shift. You know, Akron came out playing very well, had some momentum going here. Sometimes a play like that can kind of, you know, Turn the table, so let's see how Akron reacts after that after that call. Right, thanks, Antonio Petty, for coming over and letting us know it was in fact excessive was the interpretation of the action. There's Logan Rout and reach in and Ollie's gonna pick up another one. Akron foul call number 24. Ali Ali is third. He foul number four. Logan Rout Good line. job by three. Logan Rout. Good floor. You know, Logan as a, as a freshman sophomore would have walked on that play right there. That's how much better he's gotten. It looks as though West Virginia feels they can get whatever they want inside. So three in, three out for the Zips. As Route will take a look at his second free throw. It's one out of two. That's about what he does. He shot 
from a year ago, and Sheepway still not in in the second half here for the Mountaineers. Corner, cheese three, well short, and Pride chases it down. Good box out by the Mountaineers that time. Harvard, corner open, too strong. Jackson will wind up with it on the route tip. Chase Harlow is rushing his shot a little bit. Here's Banks, three-pointer, and that is well off the mark as well. So Akron again starting hot, now cooling off a little bit. Deflected out of bounds, it will be West Virginia basketball as Banks motion over to John Gross. And she way up off the bench will be coming in. Checking back into the Mountaineers, number 34, Oscar Sheepway. And he replaces Emmett Matthews, so West Virginia would route and Sheepway on the court. Two bigs. The Zips want a timeout. John Gross will get the full timeout as West Virginia now has rallied a little bit, leading 59 to 50. They'll have the ball. We return 1444 remaining in the second half. Young Mountaineer fan having a good time as they lead by nine here, five minutes into the second half. Well, Jordan McCabe might only be a sophomore in terms of his years here in a Mountaineer uniform, but he's becoming one of the leaders on the team. One example is the Breakfast Club. That is something that he started back in his freshman year of high school, and he took it here to the Mountaineer, to the Mountaineer program. He gets shooting groups together in two groups, one at 6 a.m., another one at midnight. So 6 a.m. is obviously the breakfast club, one midnight for the people that like to sleep in a little bit later. He said, look, my goal here in doing this is to find an area where other people are not working, and I want to take advantage of it. And I said, why do it here in college? He said, we're doing this to build a culture. We're in a blue-collar, hard-working state. People are up early, working industrialized jobs. That's a mentality that we want to represent here in Mountaineer Nation. He has between six and eight guys that do it. But quite an example and something you think, Robin Warren, that Bob Huggins loves to see with one of his young leaders in Jordan McCabe. I agree. I just, one question for you, Robbie. Would you have been a morning guy or would you have been a midnight guy? That, that's an easy answer. Midnight <laughs> by a mile. <laughs> Oh, uh, Tad Sherman, boy, Sherman. so much confidence. Drove yes, yes. I heard Robbie talking about the outside shooting earlier, and it's really manifested itself here with Sherman and some others. West Virginia stand man to man with the two bigs on the court. She's in trouble. Oh, yeah, that's what happens when you lose your, uh, leave your feet. Back the other way. Cheese is able to come up with it. Batted away by McBride. Logan Rout will wait. We'll go to Sherman. Sherman pumps, steps back, three-pointer. It's going to be short. Follows his own, though. Oh, nice find on Harlow. Yeah, good, good Sherman. by Sherman. And Sherman. And the Mountaineers stave off the run that got it down to six. Back up to 13 now. On the pride for the foul on Christian. Yeah, good oh, quick oh, pass oh, by oh, Sherman. Spotted the teammate wide open. Checking in for Akron. Nice catch and quick Dang finish Rian. by Harler. A basket and an assist really, really getting the Mountaineers going again. 7-0 West Virginia run over the last minute, 53. Tough shot by Cheese. And Culver the rebound for the Mountaineers. Harlan misses, but he will draw the foul. And we have a Good job by McBride keeping his head up. Finding Harlan on the wing. You want that point guard as he brings the ball up to survey the entire floor and find the open guy. John Gross not happy with the call made by the officials. Yeah, he said that was on the floor. He was not going up. Chase Harlan makes him pay with two free throws. The lead back up to 15 for West Virginia. And actually added to it, and the ball batted away by McBride. No over and back. 
shot clock at 10. Ooh. Jackson splits. Finds React. Down low to Cheese. Cheese goes up. And a lot of contact. And now Cheese is going to get teed up. Yeah. Cheese thought he was fouled on the shot. And there was some contact. Well, he and Harler had some contact earlier as well. And Chase is uh, getting under the skin. And now calling for the crowd to continue to get on Tyler Cheese. So when we had the uh, we had the hockey talk earlier, Chase Harley would be called an agitator right now. Yes, he is. Getting under the skin of Akron. And now Sherman will shoot the free throws. He'll hit the first. Cheese may have had an argument. There was a ton of t uh, contact on that layup. And there wasn't a call. John Gross had his hands in the wind, hit him up, and then uh, Cheese reacted with, evidently said something the official heard and did not like. Uh, John Gross is furious now. Yes, he, he is. Serious Williams in for Cheese. Boy, Gross is, there he is, in front of Cheese, yeah. not happy. Trying to add to a 17 point lead. Ball turned over and Jackson is going to be fouled as Sherman just simply lost the handle. That was one of those plays where Sherman made up his mind what he was going to do before he did it and drove right into trouble and ended up committing a foul. Well, we're going to see a lot of free throws over the last 12 41. Uh, you can't predetermine what you're going to do on the court sometime. It mm -hmm. just, it's just not Kevin there. Matthews checks back in for the bottom here. At the line for Akron, number one, Lauren and Christian Jackson. Conversation here. Right. Right here's with uh, Taz Sherman. Jackson hits the first. Jackson hits them both. Well, the way you let a team creep back in and just put them on the free throw line, let them get some free points. There. Jackson hits two for Akron. Well, both teams are going to be in the one on one for the rest of the half until they get into the double bonus. They'll be shooting free throws with each foul. Right, dumps down to Sheepway off. His outstretched fingertips and Akron zips basketball on the eighth Western turnover. The ball puck is, I think, a little bit too much dribbling by Deuce McBride. Chibway had good position inside. The Akron bench was yelling for a three second call, and that was probably close, but West Virginia turns it over before they can call it. There's a lob down to Reese, and Reese with a jam and finish. Well, no rotation back that time. Chibway came up. To help, no help on the backside after that lob went over his head. Into Culver, Culver, left hand strong shot off the mark. Sheetway is able to pick it off the hands of React. And then a big collision between Zerius Williams and Chase Harler, and the foul's going to be called on Harler. Wow. Well, interesting is. Well, He's getting a little testy here at the WVU Coliseum. The fans certainly egging on Chase Harler and the Mountaineers as well. The slam by Reese Ackert hanging around down 13, 11, 45 left in the second half. The Mountaineers lead is 13 with 11, 45 remaining in the second half. Ackert will have the ball to begin this next possession. And here's the call. Big, you be the referee. Uh, you know what? I don't want to be the referee on this. They called a block on Chase Harler. I guess if you had to make a call, you know, Chase has got to give him just enough space to come down there, but it was still very, very close. Um, well, it's tough because Shibuya was trying to pass to Char uh, Harler, so Harler's yes. moving towards the ball. Zerius Williams feels like he's going to get the ball and have a chance for a fast break, so he's the last to touch it, have some sort of possession with it before he runs into Harler. Or at least assumed possession right. before he runs into Harlem. Well, I tell you what, I, you know, I, I don't know, I'm glad the whistle wasn't in, in my mouth when that happened just now because yeah. I have no idea exactly how that call should have gone. 
You know, I'll say this about Akron. They've been called for a flagrant one. They've been called for a technical foul. I don't feel like they've lost their composure. John Gross wants his team to compete. Didn't feel like they competed the way he wanted to. Wanted them to against Malone no, in their first good. game, the Division II team. And I have seen no back down here from this well, Akron team. Williams hits the first. Zerius Williams with 10 points. A bigger part now 11 after he hits that free throw. And now 12. Got off to a slow start, but has heated up some with the 12 points now. 11 point lead for the Mountaineers. 11 and a half minutes to go. Yes, it is. Good battle with Reese. Trying to get it to the wing. Down into Colbert. Colbert left hand. No good. And when the ball is loose and it's picked up by Channel Bank. So zip it ahead to Jackson. Jackson off the catch. The shoot off the mark. Rebound bounces around. Goes to Matthews. Off to Haley. Haley looking to run. Now Haley will halt things through the hands of Emmett Matthews. And it is going to be an over-the-back call. Over the back violation against the Mountaineers. Tenth turnover for West Virginia. Remember, they had just two in the first half. Yeah. I think Matthews may have taken a shot. He's coming out of the ball game. Checks in for West Virginia. Checking in for Akron, Tyler Cheese. Cheese comes in for Reese. <laughs> and hearing it from the uh, crowd behind us, Tyler Cheese. <laughs> now, Brandon Knapper will have a foul called against him well away from the basket. One and one for Jackson. Well, and the officials can see that this ball game is getting very, very physical. They don't want it to get on hand. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some fouls that are going to be called now. Whereas earlier in the ball game, that may not have been the case. Now, is it fair you know that? Because earlier in the ball game, it didn't seem to be the case. It felt like they were letting a lot of stuff go. Do well, you have you, to identify that as a player? Yeah, you need you need to try to adjust. But sometimes, you know, you get wrapped up in the game with your emotions, and it just doesn't happen. But you can see if you if you're on the bench watching right now, and they call a foul on Brandon Napper like that, if you come in, you're going to say, well. If I touch someone, that could be the call also. Now, should the coaches be telling that to the players, or is that something the players should understand by having their head in the game? No, coach, coaches will tell them that, but by the same token, they don't want them to lose their aggressiveness. Mm -hmm. Aggressiveness, mm -hmm. uh, aggressiveness was smart. You know, do it smartly. Well, that's what they want when the game begins, yeah, right? Well, that's right. The lead down to nine on an 8-0 Akron run. West Virginia seemed on the verge of blowing him out, and now Culver misses off the mark. He was in so close, couldn't finish. Now Jackson will skip. Williams, three, and it is good for Zerius Williams, and Akron has battled right back and cut it down to six. And close out on the shooters. You have to know where Williams is. Into Haley. Mountaineers trying to snap an 11 0 zips run. Haley down in the box. Out to Napper. And Napper gets the nice feed from Harlan. Yes. And knocks down the three. Good recognition by Chase Harlan. From Chase Harlan. Big basket for West Virginia. Cheese will try a three. It is short. And rebound to McBride, pushing up to Harler. Harler to the basket and scores. Two good plays by Harler, that on the layup. And also, he was overplaying Cheese to the left, not letting him go left just now. Lead back to 11. Jackson, pull up. That will be short. Rebound back to Williams and Williams with the finish. So Zerius Williams starting to put some points up. He has 17. Napper thought about it. Goes into Culver. 
Culver turning back the other way. And chance for three from the play for Derek Culver. And the degree of difficulty with that shot was much tougher than the, the, the last two that he had missed inside. Remember, keep in mind, he is left-handed, left so that yes. right-handed hook is Follow not his natural shooting hand. With Chase Harley running the floor, really elevating, getting the ball right up to the board to lock it in. He's certainly been a factor, especially lately here for the Mountaineers. A little agitation and then some effectiveness on the offensive end as well. And Culver, the friendly role. Triple the freshman. Bring the ball to the floor with his team down 12. Triple drives to the basket, draws the foul. We'll have a chance to shoot a pair of free throws. On the score of Nick McBride, his third. Brian Triple. Take a look at it here. His move to the basket. He went to Huntington Prep. Huntington Prep was a school started by Rob Falford, who is an assistant yeah, now in Akron. Akron. Yes. But Triple's. Here, obviously, with the zips and Isaiah Cottrell, the WVU verbal commit and the top recruit in the class. It, the, the, the two, Triple and Cottrell, did not cross paths, but Cottrell was at Huntington Prep now, one of the consensus top 75 players in the country. Well, Triple misses the first. Cottrell's been someone that West Virginia has been eyeing for quite some time. And, uh, Finally committed to West Virginia and will be coming in next year. And Williams takes his seat and Ali in for him. So guys been their best offensive players. Triple misses a pair is now on the bench for the Zips. And to get him maybe a little bit extra break here as they head to the eight minute timeout. Napper turns the corner. Good patience by the Mountaineers to lob into Culver. They're Culver looking. Now we're going to get a foul call. And it's going to be on triple on the hole. Great triple is second. Team foul number eight. That triple at six foot one got caught down inside. And West Virginia recognized that Haley at six Remain seven had good line position line down low. Line. West Virginia trying to get that basketball inside. Really? Hits? That's kind of a miserable feeling when you're, when you're caught down low. You want to try to do your best to fight over top and at least front and make them throw a lob. And uh, Triple again got caught down inside on Haley and did another but foul. One of two for Haley. Lead at 13 for the Mountaineers. Ali hands off to Tribble. So two freshmen on the floor at the same time for Acton. Tribble turns the corner and Tribble gets the roll and the finish for Tribble. Tribble. Boy, Bob Huggins is certainly not going to be happy with the on the ball defense. Now, we've seen Cheese get to the basket all evening and now guys are just dribbling and going to the rack at will practically. So Culver lost the handle after getting tangled up with Reese who is holding his left ankle and walking gingerly towards the Akron bench. The Zips hanging around. The lead is 11 for Bob Huggins, Mountaineers. Bob Huggins and his West Virginia Mountaineers return to AT&T Sportsnet on Monday, November the 18th, when they take on Northern Colorado out of the Big Sky Conference, all part of Wild and Wonderful Sports. And it tips off at 7 p.m. on AT&T Sportsnet. The Mountaineers will next travel to Peterson Event Center up the road, I-79. Take on Pitt. The Panthers coming off a nice victory in their opener against Florida State. And then Northern Colorado, the game on our air. And you see the next two games coming up as well. We still have a few more games left in the docket. It would be interesting to see how Bob Huggins gets his basketball team ready None of these guys have experienced the pit rivalry, you know, we will he explain and say, you know, and Bob will treat it like any other basketball game, but still, you know, these guys need to understand what that means when you play against 
West Virginia and Pitt hooks up. Turnover by React coming out of the timeout. Not going to make John Gross particularly happy. Never thought about it. Culver is fouled and we'll go to the free throw line as React picks up the personal foul. So you had some experience with that backyard ball, the basketball yeah. version. Oh, oh, yes. What was it like? Yeah. Oh, it was always intense. I mean, you know, it and it would start during football season because you know, they, you would talk it over and, and then it would just kind of carry over into basketball. And it was, you know, and, and those guys were really good guys. You know, a lot of them remained friends after after you finished playing, but while you were on the court, my 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 four years here, we never wanted Fitzgerald. They never beat us here. Oh, that's great. That's how rivalry should be. Oh, it is. Culver hits them both. You know, uh, in an interview years ago with Mike Ditka, and then we were able to do another one with Jerry West a little later on. And so Ditka played basketball, but admitted that he wasn't. He was a more of a football player and an athlete playing basketball when he came out. He said Jerry West must have rolled his eyes because <laughs> it was about to get really physical. Oh my and gosh. McBride, the nice pickoff here, just a, you know, a little small snippet of the intensity and greatness of that rivalry over the years. Yep. Nice call. We'll get the push off yep. here. That was a, that was an easy call for the official. A little palm in the back and a shove. Oh, Anything in particular here. stick out with you and your time in the rivalry? No, just a, just how hard it was. I mean, and there was a lot of trash talking that went on the entire time that the game was was happening. But it, it was uh, it, it, it never really got vicious. I don't ever remember a, a fight almost breaking out. But it was just good, hard play. You always sore after the game, and really probably weren't fired up after for the next game afterwards because you spent so many uh, energy in that ball game. React hits the first the East Carolina transfer, knocks that one down. And just again talking about that rivalry, did you guys play against each other in the summer? Was it one of one, one of those sort of things? I and mean, did you play pickup ball against those guys, or was it just pretty much when the two schools collided? No, it was when the two schools collided. We played more after graduation in, in, in the Yes. Okay. Can't get enough of the stories of that tremendous rivalry. Napper steps out and hits it to number two for Brandon Napper. Would have been a three last year to two this year with the line being moved back. Well, Hugs talked about how well Brandon Napper had played this fall. And he's getting that opportunity right now. Really, you know, haven't seen much of Jordan McCabe since the beginning of the ball game. You know, and I don't know, you know, whether it's one of those things where Hugs feels that this is the right combination. Wow, oh, react. He's going to draw the block call on Napper and have a chance for three-point play. Nice, you know, nice move by the big guy. There's Napper just on the line. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Bert? I said that was a nice move by a big fella inside yeah. just now. We have a good body control. Napper trying to draw, uh, draw the foul, but got called for the block. In Melbourne, Australia. Dang React hits the free throw and it's a three point play. And it's a 10 point lead. And again, just to reiterate, looking at this for a moment from Akron's point of view, John Gross, I think, is going to have to be happy yes. with the fight in his ball club in this game. Fastball by. Yeah, just getting Carter. ready to say West Virginia looked out of sorts on that possession. Couldn't quite pull it together. Try to catch Haley going to the basket. A little too much mustard on it. The lead 10. And zips. Not going to be content as we take a look at Jordan McCabe. Still on the bench. Not going to be content with hanging around at this point. Zarius Williams, his three point attempt for Zarius is off the mark. Ride back to Napper. Napper, three pointer, too strong. Triple battling for it, and then React is going to get the reach in on Haley. Well, a lot of contact that time down low. A couple different yes. areas. React is fouled out of the game. 
Getting the left right serenade. <laughs> <laughs> no, react. no laughing matter for him, but uh, the crowd certainly enjoying it. And here's a look at the contact. Yeah, a lot of contact by Culver right there. And the they got him on the reach. Well, and react saying, "What? And what did I do?" Well, Haley just moved his feet better, right? Yeah. There's Shibwe. I haven't seen much of McCabe, haven't seen much of Sheetway in the now. second half. Andy misses the first free throw. Well off the mark. Jermaine Haley at the free throw line here. Well, if you're not doing something that Bob Hug Huggins wants done, and you're not doing it the right way, he's going to let you know one way or the other, either an earful in a timeout or a seat on the pine. And I'm not saying that's the case here, but, you know, I have seen that happen. I would say this. Uh, if you're a player, you'll take the earful. The seat in the pine hurts more. Yes, it does. You're picking up those planters over there. That... And when you have good depth on your team, uh, and minutes are hard to come by, boy, just kind of a careless little turnover there between Reese and Cheese. You know, uh, it's uh, you can get buried in a rotation. Yes, you and can. You, you can go from starter to scrounging for minutes in a hurry. You better make most of your time on the floor. It starts with doing things only one way. That's Bob Huggins' way. Well, that and hard. Yeah. Well, when you have a resume like Bob Huggins has, you can demand what you want to demand out of your team. One of the great coaches, certainly in college basketball history. That is the floater by Cheese on the other end. I'm talking to Keith Danbrock, the Duquesne coach, about that as Sherman has it rejected. Back the other way. Here's Cheese, finds Banks, and that is slapped away. Like, wow, a beautiful block. Corner, Banks, three on the way, short, and the rebound to the Mountaineers. What an athletic play. Now Banks will get the reach-in foul as Deuce McBride came pouring at it. Yeah, yeah, did he have wings? Wow. Oof, and then the hard spill. Yeah, yeah that is hard. You know, that, that, that's the kind of fall right now you don't feel. But after the shower tonight and tomorrow morning you wake up, you feel it. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You got the adrenaline pumping right now, you're okay. And Haley clutching his arm. Yeah, He's pointing to his oh, arm and now his fingers. Sometimes you can crack the old crazy bone and it'll send tingles through the arm yes, too, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Looking at McBride getting, or I beg your pardon, McNeil getting ready to perhaps check in. I haven't seen a whole lot of Sean McNeil either. We talked about earlier about Tash Sherman being fourth among all Juco shooters a year ago. Uh, scorers, I should say. McNeil was number one, one. Yes. on the Juco rank. So they have Infuse some offense into this team. Too strong on the free throw for Haley. Oh, he he the was head. at the scorer's table. He has since taken a seat back on the WVU bench. Well, you wonder if he was going to be the guy to come in to shoot the free throws yeah, yeah. because he's such yeah, a fine right. shooter. And once again, John Gross looking up at the clock and trying to squeeze a little extra rest for Zerius Williams. So Williams is on the bench here with under four and a half remaining, and the zips down by 11. Oh, nice finish as Reese gets the feed. Well, he had Reese open first and didn't see him, and then a second look found Reese wide open. Back to single digits, 83 to 74. Well, West Virginia really asleep on that last possession down for Reese to be able to be open like that inside. Ten on the shot clock. Haley looks to go to work. Napper the pull up off the mark. Rebound to the zips. Not a good possession by West Virginia. Christian Jackson on the move. They find Cheese. Cheese didn't want the three. He made it much tougher on himself in the rebound yes, to McBride. 
Maybe he's lost a little confidence in that three as he stroked a couple early and then it's pulled off. Bob Huggins wants to talk it over. Seaboy and Matthews at the scorer's table set to check in for the Mountaineers. It is West Virginia up 83 to 74. Akron still hanging around. Reese, the delivery from Banks. Yeah, the second time he saw him. 83-74, West Virginia leads. Heading down the stretch here at the WVU Coliseum, the pep band. See a nice big crowd behind them here at the WVU Coliseum for the opener here. West Virginia taking on Akron as Sheepway and McCabe. And again, two guys that we expected to play big roles, both starting in the game. Neither has played significantly. Five points, five rebounds for Sheepway. McCabe has played just nine and a half minutes very, very sparingly here in the second yeah. half. And obviously, fact, I'm not sure I've seen him at all in the second no, half. No, you have not. And, and I'm sure Bob Huggins will be asked about, you know, what, what, what the the issue was, is there injuries, is there, I mean, and Bob will do it in a professional manner and, and however he does it, but there, it is odd that you see those two starters with the limited minutes that they've had. Sheboy is out on the floor now for the Mountaineers. Big thing for the Mountaineers right now down this stretch, they did not shoot free throws well in that first ball game, uh, the, the Duquesne scrimmage, and they are coming off of two Haley misses a second ago, so set play out of the timeout. The alley oop, and was he undercut a little bit? You've seen West Virginia over the years run that alley oop out of a timeout, try to get a thunder dunk out of it, and something to get the crowd back in it. They set it up just now, but McBride was fouled. Boy, he had intentions of throwing that down, too. And now Jackson wanted some help from his teammates. Screen in the play as McBride hits the first free throw. And again, we talked about Sheboy, and he's a McDonald's High School All-American, but you know, we talked more in the scrimmage about McBride again, well, exhibition game, I should say, against uh, Duquesne, about McBride and how much they like him. He only played one game as a junior because he was hurt playing football. He's a quarterback of the football team, was hurt, and so was really under-recruited. The teams kind of came on him late, but West Virginia yeah. really thinks they have a steal in Deuce McBride. And I agree with that. And that is short, and it will be West Virginia basketball. Williams not happy with himself, had a pretty good look, yeah. and didn't get the legs into it. Brandon Napper. Napper in, and she way out. Get another ball handler on the court. As Akron showing the pressure, so Bob Huggins opts to get that extra player out. Now we're going to have the force out. There was a time in college basketball. I don't think that I think that would have just been ruled out of bounds. Yeah. Sure. And now they're they're not letting the players get as much That's away with as much there. of the right as much of the contact. Now I'm a fan of that rule that, of not allowing oh, that, oh, guys yeah. to. You see guy teams pressure and then you, you see him body bump a guy out of bounds and you know, suddenly a, a fluid division one athlete can't keep his feet and is, is falling on the floor and it's right. not because he was shoved, right? No. There's no foul there. I'm being ironic. <laughs> Sheboy checks back in. Yeah, another offensive defensive uh, substitution. Sheboy to come in, play on the defensive end, get on the boards. Right hits. So the lead back up to 12 now. West Virginia trying to make Akron slow things down there with a little bit of token pressure. Well, Akron really needs to be pretty choicey. Now, they just can't come down and rifle up shots. Jackson draws the foul, I think, on Matthews. And a, little, uh, a little acting a little bit, but there was a foul there, but there. At the line for Christian through the head back like he was hit there. Now. You know, it, it's interesting to me that in hockey you can draw a foul and also be called for embellishment. The embellishment, yeah. Right. So you can, they can do it both ways. So you can commit an infraction, but or you have a fra infraction committed against you but hey you also tried to ham it up so we're going to hit you, you for a 
which I think is interesting and we'll see if college basketball decides maybe that they need to get to that that portion of it. I hope they don't come back with more interpretations. Oh goodness. Checking back in for Tash Sherman's having his ankle looked at now hobbling down the runway. Did not see what happened to Taz Sherman, the sharpshooter for the Mountaineers. Eight points in this game. Yeah, interesting too. Taz Sherman was just cleared the other day. He had a, cush, a concussion after the Duquesne game and was just cleared two days before to start practicing again. You have to spend five days symptom free before you're allowed to return to the team. Culver spins. Culver, no good. Reese the rebound. Culver has done so many good things, but had trouble finishing. Mm -hmm. Triple, as John Gross will call the timeout, and Time out. Christian oh, yeah. uh, Lauren Christian Jackson will check back into the ball game. He wants his best ball handler out there with his team down 10, 204 remaining here in the second half, and it is a full timeout. Well, Each now, teams will talk things over, and so will we. So, yeah. if you're John Gross, what are you looking to try to do? You're trying to get a three, a quick two. Uh, you know, you would think that there's not enough time to simply play possession basketball when you're down 10 and try to, you know, exchange twos and stops. No, but 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 you're only down 10, and with the three-point shot, yes, you don't want to just come out and rifle one up, but run your good offense. The big thing is, go down, give West Virginia only one shot, and play your good defense that in. Crash the board, so you foul if you crash the boards and go for someone's back. That's okay, you probably would foul anyway. But, uh, but yeah, there's there's still time. And what he's, what I think John is, uh, John Gross is saying, do not panic. Two minutes and four seconds is quite a bit of time. We can get back in this. We talk about not panicking. Your guy, Jermaine Haley, seems to play with a slow heartbeat. 16 points, seven rebounds, three assists for the senior, and it just. Doing it all on seemingly completely under yes, control. Under control. Uh, the good body movement, the good body control. And able to use his size uh, yes, as a mismatch, advantage. right? 6 7 2 guard for the Mountaineers. So now, Tyler Cheese will inbound with the Mountaineers up by 10, 76, 86 to 76, as you saw Jermaine Haley on the bench for the Mountaineers. Now here's Cheese, three-pointer, and it's off the mark. Rebound to Reese, back out, Banks, three-pointer, and it is good this time. And West Virginia, again, not a good box out. Getting that second opportunity, and Banks makes him pay. And McBride, too tall for Colmer, and out of bounds. Well, he said you can't just make twos and get stops will they hit a three and get a turnover good outlet pass banks ready to shoot it when he caught it Logan and again that big three-point shot minute 40 as sherman has returned from being examined and now jackson will step into the three too strong matthews a good Firm rebound to the Mountaineers. Napper needs to be smart here. Don't push, don't force anything. Let's head over to Robbie and Zmikowski with the Mountaineers up seven in a minute 26 left. Yeah, you were just talking about Taz Sherman headed into the Mountaineer locker room. Talked to athletic trainer Randy Metter. It's like looking like a minor ankle sprain, which is the reason why he headed there. So he's back in the bench area. We'll see if we see him in the final 86 seconds, but minor ankle sprain is what he was dealing with, Robin Warren. Looks like he's tightening those shoes. Robbie, it's you when you get an ankle sprain, right? Tighten him up. Tighten him up. As Culver hits the first free throw. And you mentioned a guy that's going to be at the free throw line a lot. One, because of the way he plays, but two, because he didn't shoot better than 59%. Teams are going to try to put, him, put there. him there. And Culver makes him pay by hitting a pair. Lead is at nine. Minute 20. West Virginia in a little zone. Two, three zone right now. Oh, a deep three attempt is in and out by Williams. Jackson gets the rebound, though, scoops up the ball as it is laying on the ground. And now a timeout for John Gross and Akron. So, wow. That looked like that might be it. And now it's a seven point lead, and Akron calls a timeout. 
Well, they might want to foul Culver, but Culver's been deadly from the free throw line this evening. Now that 59% will certainly from last year will certainly go up. But uh, he shot the ball well from the free throw line. I think eight for eight from the line now. An advantageous mm. scoop up there by uh, Jackson. It just bounced off of uh, Napper's hands right into Johnson's. Uh, West Virginia get ready to shoot free throws. If Akron can't get a steal out of the first pass or so, I'm sure they may put the Mountaineers back on the line again. And Culver, as you mentioned, eight for eight. Let's see who's out on the floor. Now Logan Rout is out there, a 47% free throw shooter. Yeah, they're going to probably try to keep out of the hands of Sean McNeil, who is probably the best free throw shooter on the ball club in. Shot 87.6% at Sinclair Community College from the free throw line a year ago. But again, he's cold coming into the game. Right. So I wonder if that's a factor. McBride splits, gets it up to McNeil. And McNeil will be fouled. So we'll test whether that sweat drying for the last hour or so will be a factor for McNeil. Sean McNeil. Somebody asked Bob Huggins the other night on his show if, and I don't remember what the situation was they gave, but it was kind of a life or death situation. If you did have one guy shoot a free throw for you on the team, who would it be? Huggs thought for just a split second and said, McNeil. Sean McNeil. Well, he hits the first and then hits the second. And boy, you know, again, trying to carve out a role early on in the season. You get a lead and you know you can put McNeil in there and he's going to hit a couple free throws for you. That's That's got to feel good for both Bob Huggins and for McNeil. West Virginia ex extending the defense out with this zone. Oh, and Logan Rout gets oh, a piece of it, but boy. on the follow through fouls, Williams who will get a chance to shoot three free throws. By the way, Akron is out of timeouts. Two remain for West Virginia. Well, and, and then Logan Brown may have an argument right now. Bob Huggins is pleading his case. But don't even put yourself in that situation where it might be close enough that they might call it. Well. I know what you're saying, but that's tough. When you come out, you make a good play. Yeah. You jump at an angle in which you're going to miss the shooter. You miss the shooter, and you still don't get the call. Williams hits the first two. Lead is down to seven. And a new career high for Zarius Williams. His previous high come against Duquesne. It's all three free throws. Zarius Williams now has 20 points. Scored 18 against Duquesne a couple years ago and now 20 for Zarius Williams. Players on the uh, court for West Virginia need to understand they still have two timeouts at their disposal if needed. Oh, then the turnover. McGill didn't want to give it up but turns it over. Williams has it swatted away. Great job by Logan Ralph. Wow. That's huge. Logan wants to hear it from the crowd. Bob Huggins really in Sean McNeil's ear. Why? Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful play. As Williams did everything he wanted to do, got right to the rim, and Route was there to swat it away. McBride now shooting two. The freshman hits the first. A huge play by Logan. Yeah, really, two big blocks. One he got yeah. called for a foul, and then this one protecting the rim. And, yes. and think about it. I mean, I, you, know, you have a chance to cut that lead to four there, and instead it's back up to eight. Well, it's good to see him go after that too. After being called, a lot of guys would be timid and sit back and not challenge that shot. Christian Jackson tries to go to Reese, and they're going to have a kick on Reese. It'll be West Virginia basketball, and that will pretty much do what you would think. Triple checks in the game for Jackson. Jackson. 
Nice job as Culver goes to McNeil, and now a foul call on Cheese. Akron foul call number four for Tyler Cheese. So some words being exchanged here, Cheese and Matthews. Matthews is having a brief conversation with Williams as well. Now Washington is going to win their opener. Jackson checks back in for the 101 and 10 in home openers. In 111 seasons. Not too bad. That's that's <laughs> not too bad. And Neil hits the first, now a chance to hit the second. And you know, Bob Huggins team is going to be one and zero again. We talked about John Gross probably going to have a lot of positives to point out to his team, despite the fact that they're yes, going to lose their opener. Williams long three short Culver the rebound. And that'll do it. And the Mountaineers win the 2019-20 season opener. There's John Gross having words with the Akron Hall of Famer, Bob Huggins, inducted in 93 for the tremendous work he did in his five seasons at Akron. Emmett Matthews, Deuce McBride among those big contributing factors for the Mountaineers. In this game, as they win, won by the final of 94 to 84. Yeah, and, and, and certainly Jermaine Haley to be added with that group we're talking about. But the, a good opening win, not the prettiest in the world, but certainly get the season started, you'll take it. And Derek Culver, statistically again, just four for 15 from the free throw line. But again, I, I know you love the position he got himself in. He just couldn't finish, on, finish on some shot. of those opportunities. As we head over now to Robbie and Smikowski with head coach Bob Huggins. Yeah, we're going to see where this one's going to go, Bob. The good news is, first of all, you won the ball game. You scored 94, you gave up 84. Obviously, you don't want to give up the 84. What do you take away from the first game from your team tonight? We got to get a whole lot better. We, we're we're bad defensively, but you know I told you that earlier today, and I tell them that every day. I mean, we just don't we don't have the resolve right now that you need to guard people and and continue to guard people. We'll we'll make a we'll make a stand, and then we let them right back in the game by not guarding. You mentioned the resolve. Where does that come from? Well, I always I I, I grew up like that. You know, I, I, I grew up knowing that if I didn't play as hard as I could play and do what I had to do to win, I wasn't going to play very long. So Warren Baker alluded to something that you're very honest with your players, very honest with the media, very honest in general. So we didn't see a lot of Jordan McCabe and Oscar Sheway in the second half. Why is that? Well, Oscar came here to rebound. He didn't rebound. Jordan came here to pass the ball, and he didn't pass the ball. So, you know, I mean, if they're not going to do what they're good at doing, then I'm going to put somebody in it is. Do you have conversation with those guys about theirs? Hey, okay, you know why you said to them. I don't speak to them. What kind of question is that? I don't speak. Would you say that was a good question? Or was that was that a good question or a bad question? I think that was a really bad question. But you've been pretty good, but that was bad. I have to get better between now and the next broadcast, November 18th. I'm going to do that, Bob. Maybe a little preparation. What do you think? Bob, thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Derek Culver, uh, we'd be in either way with a Bob Huggins interview. Congratulations to Derek Culver tonight, 16.7 rebounds. What was the key to you tonight working down low and seeing the results that you saw, Derek? Um, I feel like the biggest thing I had to work on was my patience. My patience in the post and finding my players that were out on the key to uh, see if I can get them open three-pointers. So I feel like my patience was the biggest thing and me slowing down. You know, Derek, your talent stands out from the second you stepped onto campus here. How do you describe your comfort level and in fitting into the system in your second year? Um, so I feel like, honestly, it's coming along day by day. Um, you know, I was throwing in pretty, uh, throwing in the fire pretty early as a freshman. So with that being said, I feel like if I keep working and listening to my coaches and buying in day in and day out, I feel like I'll keep making the progress. You know, Derek, people are excited to see you as one of the big men down low. But then you add Oscar Shibway into the mix. The two of you together, what kind of presence can you be? 
Oh, man. We, we can be two very, very, two dominant big men in the post. You know, so I feel like if me and O just work with work out with each other every day on a daily basis and figure out, you know, our strengths and our weaknesses, where does he like the ball, where do I like the ball, you know, communication. I feel like communication will be the biggest thing between me and him with our growth. Well, congratulations on a good start to the season, Derek. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Robin Warren, how about Derek Culver? Big night for him, and the Mountaineers come away with a win. Yeah, 16 points, and Warren, seven players between 8 and 16 points. So nobody really exploded, but a lot of guys contributed to this victory for the Mountaineers tonight. Well, and that means you're getting that production off the bench when you, uh, when you need it. And, yeah, Bob will like that. But West Virginia's got a lot of work, as Bob says, defensively before they can consider themselves to be a good basketball team. Well, the Mountaineers looking for a... Bounce back 2019-20 season win their opener 94 to 84 for Warren Baker, Robbie and Spikowski, our entire AT&T Sportsnet crew. I'm Rob King. Thanks for watching our continuing wild and wonderful coverage on AT&T Sportsnet. I'm Richard Petty. I may be champion.